We have seven writers counting me, uh, and we sit all day, day in and day out, and we just talk story. We have one writer, Tom Schnauz, who is some sort of a rain man. Tom doesn't really have any appreciable qualities that... <laughs> He's a mammal, I would say. It's kind of character who can do a Rubik's Cube inside of 90 seconds. Peter used to be a film professor. He sees sort of the whole narrative playing field in a complete way. Sam is sort of like the joker of the room. <laughs> Probably the funniest guy I know. Sexiness. I'll just, that's all I want to say about Sam. George is interesting because he used to be a lawyer, so he has this very legal perspective on things. We have a writer's assistant, Gordon, who's our, our current writer's assistant, who often contributes as well. I sit in the room with the writers and I take down all of their ideas. I pitch every once in a while, but mostly I transcribe what's going on in the room. Jenny started off as a writer's assistant, and she definitely will remind us that, you know, guys, back in last year when we were struggling with this plot point, we were really screwed and we worked it out. Moira Wally Beckett comes off as perhaps a very proper new age, maybe yoga teacher. If you look at her death montage in episode 508, Something's really wrong with that woman, I think. We are a family now, you know, a, a brilliant, dysfunctional family. We kind of will try to do anything and everything before we get to the writing and before we get to the breaking. There's a lot of rehabilitative therapy going on. There's there's a lot of popsicle sticks and different colors. Tom Schnauz is great at making things with clay and we have pipe cleaners and things like that. Moira Wally Beckett does wonderful crafts projects, uh, usually related to dogs or cats, made out of pipe cleaners. The charitable way to look at this would be that it, it frees up the subconscious. Sometimes your hands need to be occupied when your brain is, is chugging away, trying to, trying to come up with the things that it needs in this job to come up with. <laughs> what we do all day long, and what I spend most of my time doing, uh, is breaking story with my six writers. Breaking an episode is when we go through the episode moment by moment and figure out exactly what's going to happen, all the major plot points, how each act begins and ends. The episodes are broken up in terms of teaser, and that's the opening sequence that you see before the title, and then act one, act two, act three, and act four. You want all the acts, in fact, to end with a reason to keep watching, a bit of a cliffhanger, uh, some mystery, some turn of the plot, and we sit around in this room staring at a three by five foot cork board that starts off empty. Pitching to Vince is always fun because he is very polite. We call it a safe room, and hopefully it's, there's no judgments. You could, you could say the dumbest thing ever and hopefully not be torn down too much. <laughs> Early on, you talk about color schemes, Vince. Do you think you our want. pubic hair is purple? Hey, no. Oh, oh, hey, why, why go Only there? Only for special why occasions. Go? I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was no, but he, he thinks he's in the writer's room. I know. I forgot, I forgot where I was. What you want is Vince to say, I like that. I like that. OK, and you build on it. What you don't want is Vince to go, that, That's interesting. <laughs> That's a kiss of death. That's Vince, like, trying to be nice. I'd like to uh, think that I could have been a, a diplomat. I could have been in the uh, State Department, perhaps. I think one of the tricks of it is not to get so attached to some idea that you love, that you're, you know, you're going to champion. Sometimes you swing and you miss, and sometimes you hit, and uh, it's a beauty. Vince writes every card, and it's, it's this insanely neat handwriting that looks like it's written by a psychopath. Each individual index card, one after the other, plans our story. We break in excruciating detail every beat of every scene, of every act, of every episode. After two or three weeks of, of very laborious work, our three by five foot cork board eventually becomes filled with three by five inch index cards, each of which has a plot point or a bit of a scene. And once we get to the end of the fourth act and all the cards are written, the writer's given this uh, a Xerox of all these index cards and we go off and we write the episode. A writer typically has about two weeks to write an episode of Breaking Bad. Season five is all about having one 
and Walt assuming the crown. I won. This is Walt who has climbed Mount Everest, Walt who has killed Gus, and Walt is really full of himself. Walt really feels in his heart that no matter what he does, it's going to work out. Season five was really about Walt's ascendance. His problems are not external, it's the problems of success and the problems he has with his partners, which are Jesse and Mike. So, can we take a vote? Why? Vince Gilligan walked in with the first day and said, wouldn't it be cool, wouldn't it be a great idea to, to, to cook inside tented houses? I mean, when that pitch came up in the room, I, I started to think, have we really got off the deep end here? <laughs> Are we really gonna have Walt cooking in people's houses? We started working on it. They, we kept on saying, no, this is impossible. How is this going to work? And then we really tried to approach it the way Walt would and tried to figure out how, how could this idea work? It was just so disturbing <laughs> that we were like, okay, we have to do this. Lydia is an interesting character. We felt a need for this character, story-wise. We wanted to examine the sort of white-collar criminal side of things. It's a heads up, you got visitors. Visitors, what? You mean today? Laura Frazier added so much to the character, her little pet peeves, and she became a very fun character to write. It's wrote Art Quayle. It was also fun, too, to have Hank come into her world, but we were not at all in his head. We're solely with her. I thought that was fun to write. The Skylar in season five gets to do all these interesting things with how she's reacting to Walt now, because at the end of season four, she realized truly how dark Walt is. How are you? Their dynamic that I love is she still surprises him. He doesn't understand how she can't get that he's just doing this for her and for the family. My absolute favorite moment to write and buy out was the dinner scene with mm. Skylar, Walt, and Jesse. These are great green beans, Mrs. White. They are from the deli at Albertson's. Oh. So it was the first time we've seen Jesse and Skylar together since season one, which is something we've been wanting to do ever since then, and I was lucky enough to get that episode. It was probably one of my favorite scenes of all time, writing for the show. <clears throat> one of my very favorite moments of, of, of season five thus far was Mike's death. That was highly debated. We had a lot of argument about that and a lot of concern about that. We all love the character Mike and love to write to him, so there was also this feeling like, we don't want to lose this character that we love to write, and you know, everyone loves Jonathan, and consensus came to be that really felt like that Mike needed to go. Our master plan was we wanted the last two minutes of the finale of that season to have the audience saying, what the hell? Nothing's happening. Maybe I should brew up a batch. What do you think? Ooh, Schrader bro? Yeah. I like, yes. I second that. No? Well, there you go. It's unanimous. All right. And we did that on purpose, you know, because we're evil. And you want anything? You want anything? No, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And then we wanted to drop that bomb. To WW, my star, my perfect silence.